Yeah. So we went on the golf course. My mom filmed it. We did it. Dude, the next day, he's like, bro, we have 100,000 views. We have, you know, it was just <laughs> going through the roof. It, so your you mom know? filmed you guys doing it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Zero Quit Podcast, where we bring you inside the minds of elite athletes, business owners, specialists, and other creatives. I'm your host, Brock Covington, and through these conversations, you'll hear practical advice and effective strategies for optimizing not only your performance, but also your habits and routines as well. If you enjoy the show, be sure to subscribe and share it with a friend. What's going on, guys? So today I have on Joey Muccio. He is a commercial airline pilot, yeah. athlete, and content creator based out of Florida. How you doing, man? Good. Thanks for having me, bro. Of course. So you just passed, you know, I, I was explaining it to my wife a little bit, you know, us civilians you know we just get on a plane we don't think about too much about the pilot process but tell us a little bit about kind of what you were doing here in denver just to give a little bit of background and kind of what that process is as far as kind of leveling up in the the world of of being a pilot yeah yeah so prior to the airlines i was a flight instructor so i was flying small prop planes single engine multi-engine prop planes teaching people getting them their private license instrument license commercial license stuff like that. Then once I got 1500 hours, I'm able to qualify for my ATP, my airline transport pilot certificate. So then I went to a regional airline, which like a lot of people don't even know. Like whenever I talk to people and they're like, oh, you fly for who? I fly for Endeavor. And they're like, well, what is that? Well, really it's like Delta, you know? So you wouldn't know, but it's just like those smaller planes. Like you've probably been on them. It's like two seats, mm -hmm. you know, each side. They're terribly uncomfortable. Yeah. It's never a good time on, on those. So I flew for them for Endeavor, Delta's regional, for like six, seven months. And then I got the opportunity to fly for Frontier, which they fly an Airbus, better pay, better bases. Well, you know, I looked them stuff. up after I saw you passed it, and uh, I, I noticed, you know, the, some of the flights were honestly pretty cheap. You know, I was oh, looking, super cheap. And I saw the reputation is, hey, they're cheap, but they're, they're like still a good airline to fly with. Yeah. And because I was looking at price tickets for uh, like things like Austin and Houston, they were like, 90 bucks round trip or something pretty cheap and i was so like you can oh, find it for like good. 20 something bucks sometimes. yeah because we just like booked tickets bucks. flights for uh going back and we, well, we have to go back the end of not next week or something like that something real soon for a wedding and then we're back of course for like christmas to see family things like that in virginia yeah and um it's just a pain in the ass with some of these tickets and it's just it's such a tough pill to swallow it's like we're so excited to move out you know this way but yeah. then we do have to obviously come back and see family and it's just like a guaranteed you know like thousand dollars of plane tickets each year Brutal. almost you know yeah if you fly yeah sometimes like if you fly delta united american like those three yeah. it's yeah. usually pretty pricey but do you get the peanuts with frontier no uh, nothing no dude absolutely you, bring your own you don't peanuts. even get water <laughs> oh well, well so, i you know i feel like Nothing. For the most part, I bring my own shit anyway. Right yeah, now, yeah. So, most people should. I mean, like, I guess that, if you're getting off on the Biscoff cookies, you know, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you need to reevaluate your life. Yeah, it shouldn't cost an extra couple hundred bucks, but yeah, that's like like Frontier's thing is like low fares done right. Like everything is yeah. super cheap. Like they're like you can go just bring a backpack. You get yeah. one bag for free. Good. You can go somewhere for thirty bucks. Good. But if yeah. you want a bag. 60 bucks yeah. you want some water it's it's yeah. more money you want snacks i'm a cheap bastard so that, that's, yeah. that's my style yeah so i want to get into uh because this is something my wife had mentioned to me when you first visited in uh virginia because after you know you left she's like what's his name again and then she told me about how you actually originated from vine yeah, yeah. So <laughs> she was telling me she was like oh yeah like i remember his name because you know, her and her friend in like, you know, middle school, high school times, yeah. I used to watch your videos. And so yeah. um, <laughs> I want to get into not too much about, you know, like what kind of videos you were making or whatever. Vine was a different kind of culture and different time. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, how did you get your start with, with creating content and, and how does that transition period kind of gone on from, you know, Vine obviously closing down and pivoting to Instagram? Yeah. So Vine, as you said, was completely different. Yeah. Like it was a totally different thing. Like that was pretty, it was the first platform where you can go viral. Yeah. Like from my understanding, I mean, obviously there was like YouTube coming out. It was still like early, early YouTube. There was Instagram, but then it was like Vine. Mm -hmm. And my, my brother had an account. I didn't have an account. I was never super into social media, but then the whole like grind on me, probably yeah. one of the, the videos that probably, yeah. <laughs> your wife watched back in the yeah. day, but it was the original video. Like my brother had like 300 followers. Yeah. Then 
there, there was like this whole grind on me thing trending all these guys were like doing flips humping on the ground to that mm -hmm. song yeah and we just taught Vinny how to do a backflip and we were like sick like we're all fit dudes fairly good looking we're like yeah. we might we might like this video might do pretty well yeah so we went on the golf course my mom filmed it we did it, dude. The next day, he's like, "Bro, we have a hundred thousand views. We have, you know, this. it was just <laughs> going through the roof." It, so your you mom know? filmed you guys doing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> terrible. But you know, whatever. We're all close. Yeah. She was like, yeah. "This is so stupid," but yeah. oh, okay, cool. And then the account just blew up, and then we kind of had to like go down that lane mm. of like these shirtless dancing dudes. Yeah. Which wasn't really my style. You know, I don't yeah. really know how to dance in the first place. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, like, we'll just do it for the views. This is cool. And then, obviously, like like you said, I transitioned. So, like, over time, Vine kind of died. I always told – I told my brother, Vin, I was like, bro, we should do fitness. Like, mm -hmm. I like doing – he's like, no one cares about like, – He, I remember him saying that. He's like, no, no one, one cares, cares about, about like, <laughs> you, like, working out and yeah. stuff like that. I was like, oh, whatever. And then I kind of started transitioning that way. And then 10,000 hit me up, which is how – we, we, we know connected, each other. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, okay, you know what? I'll just start doing more and more fitness stuff. And then it worked out. And then I think what's really also helped is, you know, doing both, like doing the whole pilot thing and the fitness thing. Yeah. You definitely to... separate yourself rather than just another fitness influencer. Yeah. And that's definitely a hard way to kind of cut out your own space in the industry. And that's something I've even been dealing with the past, you know, months and years too, is like, how can I be different? Because there's a million guys that you know can deadlift a ton of weight there's a million guys that can run there's a million guys that can you know post informative content there's so many personal trainers and coaches out there which is part yeah. of the reason why i've kind of just been like yeah i don't really want to be known as brock the trainer and everyone's and, like doing the optimal movement these yeah days, and, and, it's like, and yeah. the other thing too is posting content that's sustainable over time so sometimes you know as you mentioned take irvine is a very viral platform or it was you know and then tiktok is that now and instagram yeah. with reels now can be very viral but the problem is you might have something get a million two million views but that's not the content you typically create yeah. and so you need to have a profile built on consistent content that's i feel like authentic to you because something i battle with too is you know maybe you know you, you feel this way too is there's some content that you know will get clicks or it could be like shirtless videos yeah, or you know sure. there's other people i see you know that i'll follow and things like that that post you know here's my my training program or here i train here's how i train for this but it's like you can't post your weekly training vlog every week yeah you know it's not sustainable so you almost need to have different layers to the onion right whether it be pilot but i'm also you know, I also post my workouts on your, you know, training app, or I also do yeah. these different things. You have, I have to have kind of like levels to who you are as an individual that make you more interesting to be followed, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it is hard to to like differentiate yourself, kind of in that fitness space, like you said, and that's why I do like that I'm doing both, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm kind of going down the lane, the the lane of like, hey, listen, I can have a job. Because I, I hear it all the time, especially like in our industry, because we're flying, we're traveling, and everyone's like, "Oh, you know, but you know, how am I gonna eat good on the road? Yeah. Like, how am I gonna get workouts? Or like, hotel gyms aren't that that great, or like whatever." So that's like the lane I'm trying to go is be like, "Hey, listen, I've probably like one of the most more difficult jobs in terms of schedule flexibility, but this is how I eat. Mm -hmm. This is how I stay, you know, on good workouts, like at the hotel gym or whatever." Yeah. But. I feel like as a pilot, you know, well, first of all, tell people kind of what the typical work schedule is, because I think I think you've explained it to me once before, but it'd be good to kind of give a brief overview of how many days you're working and what that schedule's like. Yeah. So in the regional world, it was way worse. I was getting maybe like 12 days off a month, like not not all that that much. Uh, and I was commuting. So I was living in Florida, commuting to New York. Mm -hmm. So some of those days off, yeah, you were I'm, telling me about I'm that. traveling. So it was pretty rough. But here at Frontier, like. I know guys getting 18, 19 days off a month, you know, mm -hmm. barely, barely working. You know, you can kind of work as much as you want. You can always pick up time and whatnot. But my typical schedule that I would want is like three on two off or four on three off. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I'll stack my schedule and do like 12 days off in a row and then I'll just work the rest of the month. Mm -hmm. So every single month you get the ability to 
bid for a schedule. So one month I can ask for that, you know, four on three off schedule. Mm. And one month I could just try to stack it. Another month I could get my schedule, drop a bunch of trips and pick up a bunch of other trips that yeah. I would rather want rather than the ones that I got. But you're probably typically so, gone for multiple days, like a week at a time, right? Yeah, it yeah. depends. With Frontier, they actually do a lot of day trips. Like okay. it depends on the base. So you'll do an out and back. Like if, if, okay. I'm, in, if I'm in Orlando, I'll just fly Orlando to Denver, back to Orlando, and then I'm back home. Yeah. But I rather go for like three days and then be off for three days. Yeah. Or something like that. So definitely, I feel like, you know, there's two factors you mentioned that make it hard for most people, or they would be the go-to excuses for people's diet and exercise, right? Yeah. Diet, I think, you know, you obviously work with, what's the company again? Quick Fresh. Quick Fresh. And there's different, you know, meal prep companies you can go to. There's different ways you can try and pack food and such, so forth. Yeah. But I think the harder aspect for most people, or at least what I find most interesting, is the exercise because you don't have a guaranteed exercise space. You're not even guaranteed you have a hotel gym sometimes. You don't yeah. know what the hotel gym is going to look like, which yeah. I've seen on your story. Sometimes <laughs> it's great. Sometimes, sometimes it's crap. Sometimes the so weight's good. very limited. And especially with strength training, it's hard to have you know enough weight and know how to make it feel heavy and things like that. So what are what are your kind of go-to exercises or advice you give to people as far as training on the go, whether that's no equipment, you just got to do something in your hotel uh, room or the gyms themselves, like making them work for you. Yeah. So yeah, the typical hotel gym, you know, I mean, it's like the most you're going to get is a 50 pound dumbbell. Yeah. That's it. That's the peak. That's the <laughs> pinnacle of it. That is the pinnacle. And then if you have a cable machine, you're stoked. Yeah. Like, cause you're you could, set, you're made, you get man. so creative with a cable machine and do a bunch of different movements mm-hmm. and it's fairly heavy. So obviously if I have that, I can get creative and actually get some really good workouts in. If you don't have that, I mean, do pushups, pull-ups yeah. and air squats, you know? Yeah. I think those three, you can get the sickest pump off of pushups. Yeah. Push up, pushups are good. Pushups are good. It's just, yeah. I guess setting up dips between like, you know, a bed and a chair or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You're just maybe. trying to make it work. I feel like imams, things like that. It's definitely yeah. just tricky with that. So, or like go on runs. Like I think yeah, now runs like, are good. Yeah. Cause I've been wanting to lift heavier and like, yeah, I still have that urge to like want to lift heavier and get big. Yeah. But in this situation, it's like, I, I can't be as consistent with that and being yeah. able to lift heavy. So I'm like, screw it. Like, Oh, I just saw you ran a ultra marathon, yeah. 50 miles, which is nuts. <laughs> and then I go and run like four miles. I'm like, I got to step it up. So my, my new goal is to do a marathon. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if, if you want to do get, one, you got good speed. So, you know, I, I'm slowly that. starting to get a little bit faster, Yeah, but dude, we should do a marathon. I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do it. I, I want to get back and dabble a little bit with road marathons in like next year and just work on speed a little bit. Yeah. But it's funny though. I just feel like the more, cause I just did a little bit of some, some faster running this morning and I don't know, dude, I feel like I end up either getting in my head or I feel like that's where the injuries come up is when I start doing more intense, there's more pounding on the, you know, the joints and things like that. Yeah. It's almost just like low intensity, slow, easy runs. Yes, it isn't impressive, but then I'm like, okay, I'll make it impressive by just going extremely far. Yeah. So that's like my, my play, but rewinding a little bit to the content, you know, yeah. Vine culture is obviously the, the big thing of the six second video. Right. And then that kind of died down and people are like, Oh, people want, you know, longer form content. Obviously TikTok has surged. That's short content and everything is about reels in one minute or less, right? Yeah. How do you kind of view and balance making that content? Because, you know, there's been this big pivot to where I used to do really well on photos. Um, you know, other people I'm sure used to post like workout price swipe videos, right? Of an exercise, each thing, things like that. Yeah. Now we're almost all forced to do reels because Instagram will not give you any rub. Yeah. So how do you kind of A, make that content on the road and B, balance you know posting content you want but also content that you know is going to get engagement yeah um i don't know i i I don't i wouldn't say like sometimes i'll look for the engagement like if it's it's something that's trending yeah but that's pretty much the only time i'm like okay yeah let's let's just try to get views here yeah you know but other than that i'm just i like to just post what i can post the most consistently Mm -hmm. so it's like a hotel gym workout Mm -hmm. or i get a lot of questions now that I'm in the airlines that people are like, oh, how'd you get there? Mm-hmm. How much did it cost? All this kind of stuff. So I kind of mix the three together. You know, some like photo content for different companies like yeah. cuts or 10,000s. And then workout content, whether that's like an at-home at real gym workout, on the go running workout, and then, you know, trendy yeah. type videos. And then what makes it easy is just repurposing it. 
Yeah. You know, I'm sure you do that as well, like on TikTok and Instagram. Yeah. I'll try to post TikTok one day. I've given up on Instagram. TikTok, dude. Have you? I well, we, when we talked about it, you got me to start posting again, and then yeah. I did, and then I was like, this, this isn't working. One, they're not getting views. <laughs> Two, I feel like the problem is what's trending on TikTok is different than Instagram, correct? For the most part. Yeah. So the problem is, though, I refuse to use TikTok, not only because I think a lot of the culture is uh, degenerative, but <laughs> also it's just constant yeah. um, ass and titties, to be quite frank. Oh, yeah. Is, is all of TikTok. You've got you to change your algorithm. Then. No, no, dude. I, <laughs> if, if oh, your, your algorithm is <laughs> no. ass and titties. Dude, the day one I created my account, that's all it was. Yeah. So it, it, it probably it isn't starts even there. Me. It starts there, and they're like, it's like the bait. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. we got you now. But, but if you just start following a bunch of fitness dudes or like I tried, I other tried. stuff, then but it's anyway, like, but I, I oh, gave oh, up oh. on it, man, because it's tricky. You know, it's it it is similar. You can repurpose it. There's you that's know, what I was saying. Just just worst scenario, you just throw it up there and see what sticks. But uh, yeah, it is a little tricky. So you know, you mentioned obviously you make content for brands and things like that, and shoot campaign deals and things like that. Yeah. Uh, how does that work with you being away from home so much, as far as receiving the product to actually shoot stuff with? meeting deadlines and things like that yeah so sometimes that is tough like i have to let them know like hey listen i'll be gone yeah i'm gonna come home i'll get with my with my videographer like this day mm -hmm. and and then i can get it done but like most of the brands that i work with are pretty flexible with that mm -hmm. but even since i've been out here i did like a ten thousand shoot mm -hmm. and they, they just sent everything out here mm -hmm. and then they have a bunch of ten thousand guys out here you eric mm -hmm. uh mike who whoever else a bunch, a, bunch like a bunch of guys just lingering out here right now. Yeah. yeah. Don. Don. I don't know if you know if you met him. Don Tran? No. Um, Was Don like Reichel. Ultra oh, no. runner. Yeah. No. He's doing the uh, a new feat of strength next month. Uh, not to harp on it too long, but he's doing uh, 24 hours on the assault runner. Oh, nice. Something nuts, yeah. Damn. Yeah. He's probably going to get like 100, 100 <laughs> miles or something He's shooting for like 130, yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. But, but, yeah, so but, it's but tricky yeah. with that. Yeah, I guess like, but sometimes I could do it by myself. Like, yeah, I'll always yeah. travel with a tripod, and then sometimes they don't want anything super high quality, like yeah. to where I would need a videographer. Just like more of like a day in the life sort of deal. Yeah. I'll throw on some cuts or well, sometimes I'll do a it's, it's like it's the the authentic stuff and the authentic camera almost is more worthwhile than the overly edited stuff. It does better sometimes. You know, I, I was t talking it, to somebody about this the other day. It's like sometimes I put so much effort into these angles and these clips, and I throw up a reel and it does shit. And then I'll throw up just like one clip, just slow mode, and it does way better. Dude. And I'm like, why am I even trying, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because especially yeah. recently, it is just a crapshoot trying to like figure out what tough. works and what doesn't. Because it's like, oh, just follow the trendy like audios. And it's like, that's not working. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. And the funny thing, too, is, you know, I was talking to um, a guy I had on actually the first episode, Jeremy uh, Miller, because we were talking about it months ago about, you know, like, hey, what's working for you? What's working, you know? For me this and that and uh i was telling him how i had this huge surge from like february through may where i couldn't miss it was like every reel i was mostly doing like those motivational type uh audios i'd you know throw some editing footage that you know was very authentic and actually what i'm doing yeah. and those would just do fire 40,000 80,000 800 a million and it was good i can post the same thing now and it's like not working yeah. so it's like you got to constantly – you're constantly chasing the carrot at the end of the stick with, with Instagram, it seems. It's just difficult to stay up to date. Yeah. No. Dude, I, I posted the other day when I was in the Keys, yeah. like a little workout. I had like 300 likes. Yeah. I was like – Like, what's going on? I've never gotten – Like, they hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like – wait, I was like, I have 117,000 followers yeah. or whatever. I'm like, how am I getting 300 likes? Like, how am I only getting like 6,000 people viewing – this reel but then like like you said then another reel blows up and it, yeah it just depends like especially tiktok like tiktok i feel like they used to hand out views like candy yeah like everyone was going viral everyone you know mm -hmm. out of your friend group had yeah. one video on tiktok that absolutely took off now it's like a little less common but whatever i mean you just keep posting i think dude just you continue just to, to keep post. posting yeah i mean because yeah. you, you're gonna post your reel on instagram anyway yeah just throw it on tiktok I, mean, I already deleted it again, man. Dude. <laughs> I'm anti-TikTok, man. Oh, well, yeah, whatever. If you don't like doing it, then hell yeah, don't do it. <laughs> you know? So, you know, we were talking about it, honestly, before we turn on the camera. What what are, like, 
some outside goals or interests that you're kind of working towards. You mentioned a marathon. I don't know if you have other like lifting goals that you're, you know, you're focused on, but what, what I guess are some bigger picture things outside of, you know, leveling up as a pilot and creating content that you're kind of pursuing or, or at least envisioning in the long run? Yeah, that's something I need to think about more for sure. But yeah, short term, the marathon. Yeah. Because I, I know I could do it. I just need to like check it off the list because I, I, I did the half. Where did you do the half? New York. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So like the Brooklyn half. So I know I could do a marathon. I just want to do one fairly well, like yeah. do like a 330 or something. That'd be good. Like that would be nice. That'd be nice. I think that's like a eight minute pace or a little bit more. Yeah. Eight minute pace, something like that. So that'd be sweet for my first one. Then I want to do a sub five, mm-hmm. one mile, which I think, I think I could do that too. And then, I mean, obviously with my career, just continue to move up, mm-hmm. like be, become a captain. Cause there's always like peop, some people don't, don't know this. There's a captain, there's a first officer. Mm-hmm. So I'm obviously a first officer now. You always start like at a new company, you'll always be first officer for a few years. You get your seniority up, then you get the ability to transfer over to the captain. They make obviously more money, but you have a lot more responsibility. So is the long-term vision keep stay, staying as a pilot? Is this something you want to do, continue to do long-term? I know we talked about this a little bit. It's hard to say. Things change and you know, yeah. and things like that. But you know, do you see yourself trying to transition to – be more time of a full-time content creator and and obviously it'd be nice to increase that revenue to a point where it could be a full-time you know position do you have yeah. i guess aspirations that are or a plan of slowly kind of transitioning to that um i wouldn't i mean that would be sweet you yeah. know at, at a certain point if i was making a certain amount of money i'd yeah. be like okay this makes more sense than, yeah. than flying but flying does also make a good amount of money and I love being able to do both because yeah. I think that's what does differentiate myself like from other fitness influencers. Yeah. Cause, cause yeah. I, I hear a lot of time they're like, Oh dude, like you, you motivate me because you do this as well. Yeah. Like a lot of other people, they're just like, Oh, well this guy works out all day. Well, it's like, funny. Of course he's jacked. You can, you can make, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You could make the same amount or more money. Let's say just being a content creator, just being a personal trainer, something like that. Yeah. But people, find it more interesting if you're doing multiple things because yeah you know for example we sold our gym you know a couple months ago and i was thinking about this i think it was yesterday i was like you know how do people picture me what like what's cooler hey i owned a gym and sold it and now i just do this or hey i you know do do what i do now i run lift manage podcasts edit but i also own a gym in virginia yeah that might be cool to some people to like still have those different avenues those different layers kind of like to you you know yeah it even depends if you're, yeah it, it definitely depends, depends on the person. i feel like the younger generation is more like you hear more kids now be like i want to yeah. be a youtuber yeah like, i want to be a, <laughs> a content creator yeah but it's like i don't know for for some other people i feel like they they want that diversity and like for me i feel like it just keeps me on track too just to have like a little bit of stability yeah, like, well, that's the other thing I was going to say. I, I wouldn't want that stress of yeah. being like, oh, my content has to do good. Like, yeah. I, like, I could lose my Instagram tomorrow. I could say something yeah. stupid or, like, someone could hack my get account, yeah. get canceled, yeah. <laughs> like Andrew Tate or something, yeah. <laughs> you know, say something. Yeah. But I don't know. So I'm a little – I think I'm a little timid to go. I think the most people that, that do make that transition, they do have, if not a fallback plan, they have uh, – fallback income sources yeah i think it's tricky to uh go all in on something like that because like you said a lot of the deals are one off and even if they are very lucrative you know you're banking on your content consistently doing good you never know how things can pan out so it can get kind of very tricky you know and yeah you just never know i guess where your where your next paycheck's coming where do you feel better though Because, because you were saying like i mean who cares what other people think, you know? Yeah. Because it's like, 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 did you like having, okay, I own the gym and, and I do this, or are you like very, very much happier now just being like, okay, I could just focus on this one thing. And that was kind of like something that I needed to do that. I didn't so really I like having multiple, I, I, I want to be a diverse and interesting individual, which sounds like, okay, obviously everyone wants to be interesting, <laughs> right? you know, but, but it is something I, I feel like as far as leveling up, um, your personality leveling up, you know, who you are as a human being, you know, it is, is through experiences, through skills, through things you've done, whatever, and so forth. So for me, you know, adding running and adding a 50 miler to my resume is a character builder. It Absolutely. adds more to who is Brock Covington. 
Yeah. Um, another thing I've been doing a lot the past few months at this point has been reading a lot more philosophy, just being a lot more like educated and, you know, not as a way of like, you know, look at me. I, you know, I don't want to be the guy posting on my story. Look, I'm reading Aristotle or something like that. Yeah. But I feel like it just adds, again, more intrigue to who I am and it adds more to like what value I can bring and thoughts and, you know, interesting takes I can have on things. Um, you know, we talked about being into MMA and talking like things like that. So, yeah. uh, I think it's, it's good to have more, more interest, more things about you, even if diversifying sometimes can lead to less success in different things. So I, I don't know. What do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, cause like you said, know. there's so many people that I think when you are just a, another personal trainer, no one is going to stop on your profile and no one's going to care to like listen to you if that's all you are. Because there's so many it other depends. people like but, but, I mean, but there are so many just personal trainers that are super successful. Yeah, So I, I mean, know. whether you differentiate, differentiate yourself with the quality of your content, with the quality of your knowledge, yeah. with whatever tips you're giving, how many people you're helping, how nice you are, how funny you are. I guess I at the know. end of the day, it's how can you set yourself apart. And to me, I feel like it's the more different, interesting things I do. Yeah. yeah, like I always thought it would be cool to be like, okay, I've done a bodybuilding show, I've done a powerlifting meet, I've ran a marathon, I've ran an ultra marathon, yeah. maybe I do a triathlon. Like you do these different kind of big uh, benchmark items. I feel like it grabs people's attention in a different way. Absolutely. You know? I mean, dude, you look at uh, – what's his name? The, the guy who owns Playbook. I don't know why I'm De- – Devin, Devin, oh, Devin LeBay. Oh, yeah, Lebe. exactly. Great example. I think he blew up after he did that bear crawl marathon, right? Yeah, you got to do just you weird shit. You got to do some shit. crazy shit. You got to do some weird shit. Yeah. As, as clout chasing as it is, you almost got to just have a bunch of, like, business ventures that you're into, you know? Yeah. And even if – the truth is, even if the businesses you own or run aren't successful, just from the outside perspective, it looks like you're a, you know, a serial <laughs> entrepreneur. Baller, yeah. And so sometimes it is a, a bit of, you know, you ask, like, which would you prefer because it's about your happiness versus, you know, what other people think. Yeah. I think, it, you know, there needs to be a little bit of a balance, right? Because you need to do what makes you happy because I enjoy my life now more because I'm not stressing and managing the gym. But I do think there's – there's more eye eye catching, you know, characteristics to me when I look like I, you know, I own a gym and do this and do that. So yeah, it's kind of like you gotta, you gotta, especially as a content creator, you gotta create a resume, you know, yeah. of of interesting accolades and, and and characteristics to you. What are what are your next goals? What are you uh, What are you gonna do? Well, next? I I've, I gotta run a hundred mile race at some point. You can do Le- like a, Leadville. I'd love to do Leadville. I think I'd get crushed by Leadville. Yeah. But uh, and I'd have to get into like the lottery system. But I think 2024 I'll run that. Um, so this Jeez. next year I want to do like a 50 mile or 50k. Like just get more experience under my belt. Yeah, um, dude, that's tough too because you're jacked. You know, like like you 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 see so many people doing these like 50 miles, 100 100 yeah. miles. They're stick bugs most yeah. of the time. Most of the time, but there, the, there well, is the challenge is the challenge is maintaining that. Uh, I appreciate that that ad- adjective added to me <laughs> that I'm jacked. You know, so jacked. Ho- hopefully people perceive me that way still. Uh, but it, you know, it's my physique has definitely changed a lot over time, and that's been tough to, you know, accept in transition as far as you know. I am adding in this this totally different training. Very yeah, have you lost based. a lot of strength. Like, I've in lost. The process? I've lost a good bit of strength, but not an insane amount. You know, probably like That's twenty good. to thirty pounds on most of my lifts. A lot of it comes down to how I still train, though. Um, yeah. As far as like size, I'm I'm like leaner now, but it's not pure like muscle gone. But it's still it's still different. It's still hard to do both and hard to like excel at both. So it is like a little bit of a give and take yeah. and a sacrifice you have to make. But yeah, the running's a big goal. The podcast is, you know, is something I really enjoy in networking with with different people and, um, you know, growing those relationships and and ideally, uh, getting people beyond just the fitness sphere kind of onto the podcast and growing that, you know, growing it that way as well. But a lot of it is, you know, I don't know, just finding kind of what path I want to go with content too, which is why I was, you know, asking you, like, yeah. how do you view your content? Because I don't just want to be boxed into just a fitness space you know uh because there's only so many times you can show how to do a squat or you know so many workouts you can kind of show if yeah. like it gets like a little bit of rinse and repeat i think about that all the time too like if i'm doing especially like a hotel yeah. workout you're like I'm who like, cares I, about I, and some people do. i may have okay, done do this exact workout yeah. before you yeah. know 
I mean, yeah. How many how many different curls can I do with with a yeah. dumbbell? You know, but well, especially when you've done it for so long, like, I'm sure you've lifted just as long as I have, if not more. You know, a, a decade, give or take. Yeah. And it's you know, that is something where when I first got into it and into bodybuilding, like it's so exciting. You know, you do concentration curls for the first time, and you're like, oh my god, like this is so sweet. Is and you're sick. focusing on your physique. There's so many changes. But then you get you know older. And that's where a lot of people fall off because they lose passion. They don't have goals set. Um, but it's kind of like reevaluating, okay, you know, why do I do this? What do I want out of it? And, you know, accepting that not every workout, everything you do is going to be new and motivating and, and exciting, exciting and different. And it, you just have to accept that this is like a part of your lifestyle. This is why you do it. This is why you want to do it. Yeah. I think it's important like to share that too, because a lot of people want to do these exciting workouts all the time. It's like, no, 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 no. Like the dumbbell curl. Yeah. works basics like yeah, yeah. The, the squat that works. was a good thing i did too with you know transitioning from you know i'd gone to a commercial gym then i had my own gym which still had a lot of different commercial items as far as free weights machines and cables yeah but then going to my garage gym now especially with it being a you know single car garage uh i have to cut it down to the bare basics you know i have a power rack scar rack yeah. i have my cmbs which are you know center mass bells similar to like dumbbells basically and I have some kettlebells but it is basically all free weights you know i don't have a cable stack yeah. Um, I obviously don't have any machines. I don't have a hack squat. So it's almost forced me to stick to the basics, which I think has done me very well as far as core development and overall, like just how my physique is like changed a little bit. Do you strictly work out there or do you also go to a commercial gym? I strictly work out at the home gym. Oh, uh, nice. My wife, <laughs> she, she primarily works out at the gym. She's a personal trainer at, yeah. she only sometimes works out in the garage gym, which I take a little bit of offense to. Really? Yeah. Do you guys but, uh, go at it like, oh, you should have got this machine or whatever? Like she has her favorite machines, but she definitely just took over. So she she prefers the commercial gym for two reasons: one, options of machines and cables and things like that, which I get, especially since she's not as focused on hybrid and functional stuff as I am. Yeah. But also, she really likes the community aspect of it. A lot of people, that energy. Yeah. I can work out in an empty room and and be happy as hell like Same. love it you know Same. i i get distracted by the tvs by the people around me everyone you know, wants to talk by the sh- guy something. shadow boxing in the corner you know yeah yeah everyone wants to talk so yeah. it, it's just you know what you do what what you want different out of your own kind of gym environment or experience but does she run does no she? no i cannot talk her into running really? and i don't blame her i didn't like running i thought i'd never run but me no, too she did not run now we're trying yeah. to like find a balance of how we like to hike because I like to hike with intent, you know, with like purpose, like A to B. Yeah. And she likes to enjoy the view more. Yeah. So we're trying to like find a happy medium. The, find a happy <laughs> medium with that. Yeah. That could be but tough. I, I, I kind of have like talked myself into, okay, I bought her some trail shoes for like just hiking in general. I'm like, maybe yeah. I can talk her into running this little section and then you yeah, know, eventually yeah. ease her into I get it. a mile, you get a mile, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll do see. do a fast mile and then we'll just chill on the next one. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see with that. So yeah. we're kind of all back all over the place with like fitness pilot, fitness pilot. But that's, you know, that's yeah. about you. Yeah. But uh, what are some like little secrets and tips that you would have for people flying that they may not know? Are there, is there anything that would be like I say like interesting? I say the, like, the most shocking thing that I tell people that everyone's always shocked about is the first time I go fly the Airbus is going to be with passengers. Like you only fly the simulator. Like, like we don't get to go fly around, yeah. you know, and practice in like the actual plane. So the, that is kind of wild. Actually, <laughs> so everyone's always like, that. wait, what? <laughs> you've only flown the simulator but it is so so it's like you've only played need for speed and now yeah. you're gonna go out and drive <laughs> yeah exactly i mean obviously yeah. like my first 25 hours have to be with like an experienced captain yeah like a specific experienced captain. okay yeah so he'll be there of you're kind of like being shadowed and yeah in case yeah you, okay. and then obviously you know if i start doing something stupid he's gonna be like yo, yo, yo. <laughs> and he has control so he could take yeah. over but but yeah i mean that's probably the most shocking thing. A lot of people are scared to fly like with turbulence. Yeah. Turbulence is like hitting a bump in the road or like, yeah. you know, on your boat, there's like some when waves. When should you be concerned with turbulence? <laughs> so, so rare. I mean, dude, yeah. if your coffee starts like splashing, oh, okay. touching so the it, ceiling. It's like, like full blown earthquake mode. Yeah. No, basically turbulence is nothing to worry about. Usually it's like a light, light turbulence. It's not dangerous at all. Like we avoid it as much as we can. We get turbulence charts yeah. We know where the turbulence is, like, in, in the flight levels, and we'll try to avoid it as much as we can. But if there's, like, a, a storm, we're, we'll avoid it. 
But yeah. there are certain clouds like we'll have to go through them, and usually in the clouds is where you're getting the bumps. It's just air moving up and down. Yeah. So. Well, what do you got coming up next? I know you just passed your you know thing with Frontier. Is there anything I guess coming up soon that grabs attention, grabs the mind? Uh, I'm gonna have some time off, which is gonna be sweet. Yeah. I'm gonna have like three weeks off. Yeah. So that's gonna be awesome. You'd be and in then, Florida for that? Yeah. And okay. then I'm going to Brian Moss's HPLT okay. event. Yeah. In Antigua, so that's gonna be. A couple well, you have something in Bali, out. don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you that's, don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> that's in May. So yeah. it's May, May eighth uh, to the fourteenth, I yeah. think. Um, that's gonna be sweet. Yeah, me and Nick Walker. I don't know if you follow him, him at all. He, he's like a personal trainer. No. Yeah. Well, that's I guy. saw that he yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's a stud. He's Jack. He's blowing up lately. Yeah. Like on TikTok and Instagram, he's got a bunch of followers. But you so, know, maybe we just got to get back to the grind on me videos. Maybe that's like. No path way. to success. You sure? You know? I almost, <laughs> I almost like, I should repost some of them just as a yeah. joke. But dude, I was watching. I don't know if you saw that story I posted, but it was like another trend of like that bra, that sticky bra. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. It's yeah, just yeah. funny looking back, looking back five yeah. years and being like, I used to post this. Yeah, it always Instagram. feels cringy as shit. Yeah. I remember I used to, you know, because I. I had so many different YouTube channels I feel like growing up, you know, and I used to post these different like tech reviews and my voice was so high pitched and it was like photo booth video. And it, you know, yeah, you just look back, you're like, what was I doing? What was I yeah. doing? But you only got here because of that. Yeah. You know, yeah. same thing like Gary V will post something yeah. from 10 years ago and he's like, look at this. Yeah. This is terrible. Yeah. But look it's at the me people now. that just stick with it. Yeah. You just stick with it and you just get a little bit better, a little bit better with content. Yeah. And uh, next thing you know, yeah, you, you kind of see where you come from, yeah. So in those early days, did you have friends talking shit? Dude, you know, I trying had a, to trying to like this put whole, you down, whole, tell, tell you not to do it. Whole thing of my uh, whole thing of feel like my adolescence was uh, in middle school, sixth grade. I started uh, rapping, so that was like you know, so I started making songs, had a little like mixtape, and um, was it the worst thing in the world? It was close, but it wasn't like, you know, the most god awful thing. I even like, you know, a song or two I've like listened back to. I'm like, okay, it wasn't like the worst, but it wasn't great. I have to listen to. But some to of these your raps, point, bro. oh, it's it's on the dark web at this point. <laughs> it's gone. But uh, yeah. but to your point, no, people give you so much shit, and then you look at them now, and it's like they're working like Capital One or corporate jobs, which nothing wrong to Capital One workers, but it's like the shit you go through now and the shit you're willing to put up with as far as putting yourself out there, yeah, willing to be embarrassed, willing to be creative. Those skills, the comfort you gain on camera is so worthwhile later on. Absolutely. That, you know, you'll put up with the cringy, embarrassing moments that you went through in childhood or whenever you did post stuff to have the success you do and the comfort you do now and the quality you, you know, you've improved towards. Yeah. I mean, you were willing to try it. Yeah. Like, who knows? You could have been the next Eminem or Dave, whatever, you know, Jack Harlow, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Harlow, even better. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, same thing for us, for sure. I mean, considering the content that, that we were creating, mm -hmm. our buddies were like that we play baseball with or wrestle, yeah. but they're like, what are you guys doing? You guys are like, you know, just trying to get views. Yeah. And you guys look like, you know, a few douchebags. Yeah. Or whatever. It's like, yeah. It's like, all right. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. But, but you know who I am. Like, you know, this isn't yeah. who I am, Yeah. you know, on, on these videos, but it's just funny. A lot of people, dude, especially it's, I mean, it's pretty, pretty bad everywhere, but in the pilot space, it's so bad. Like, it's because it's mostly like boomers that don't post content. It's boomers. And then it's also people <laughs> who are like, I don't know, like, like it, it, they just it, don't get it. They, they don't get it. Yeah. Or they're like, they want their job to be like so secretive i don't know if they want it to be secretive or like serious or like or they also just think like you're clout chasing because you're it might like, be part oh, of the yeah. culture too because you know I, I watch you know you had a video about you know why do we shave and a lot of it almost seems to be very you know traditional conservative ways that pilots absolutely uh, act and how they present themselves you know when it comes to uniform and presentation so a lot of it is i feel like i don't know when you just stand out in that way it's almost frowned upon yeah 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 it is and everyone talks crap. <laughs> like there's a page. There's then a, they want cut shirts. And yeah. then they want exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then like you know, yeah, whatever. Some some people you know change, but 
there's a there's a page called shitty pilot influencers oh are you on there yeah it's all you no 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 it's <laughs> not all me fucking, but there's this other kid yeah. in my class josh who yeah he posts like funny pilot content yeah yeah which people really don't Lo- like oh they don't well, people, really hate it people, people like, like, it. like it pilots don't pilots don't because oh, they're fuck. like you're making us look bad you're making this job look like a joke and Damn. it's like no dude i'm not making the job look like a joke but like we could be serious yeah. and we can have fun at the same yeah. time yeah and it's like sure you know i'm like you know i post a pilot content and then i'm also Sometimes thirst trap. And, yeah, the you know, question is, though, is who has the, the shitty uh, pilot influencer account because they're doing exactly. the same thing. They're exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right? Like, I wish I could find this kid. Like, yeah. you are trying to kind of do what we're doing yeah. in a way because you want, you want these posts to But you just can't make your well. own content. Yeah, you yeah. can't do, make, make yeah. your own content. So, like, I don't know. We, we made a funny video in training, actually. We ended up kind of getting in trouble for it. No. He he posted it, my yeah. buddy Josh, and then uh, like we kind of ended up getting in trouble for it. We had to take it down, but there was one scene of me in there like I tried to flush some steak down my toilet, and I clogged mm-hmm. the toilet. So then they brought in like a plunger, and I was shirtless yeah. and I was acting like I was oh. plunging the toilet. <laughs> and they just got a video of it, and it was in there. And now these guys like <laughs> screenshotted it and they put words over the picture, and they're like, "Oh, Frontier's new, you know, first officer, nice, like, get this nice. guy out of my crash pad, like <laughs> making a joke out of the photo." And it's just like, yeah. You, you know, you guys are like bullying uh, yeah. us. You know, it kind of, it's like very immature yeah. in the way that like some people try to mess with people on social media yeah. because either they're jealous or it's usually jealousy, I think. Yeah. But you never know. Yeah, it's a tricky space. Well, I yeah. appreciate uh, appreciate having you on and uh, definitely getting like more of an insight of, I guess, what that pilot life is like and balance yeah. and all that. And I'm glad we could connect before you uh, fly back out to Florida. But uh, anyway, where can people find you? Uh, Instagram. Yeah. And TikTok. And TikTok. Joey Muccio. And that's Spell pretty it. much it. J-O-E-Y-M-I-U-C-C-I-O. There so, you yeah, go. both of those. I got all my links and stuff in the bio there. The Bali trip's happening in May. If anybody wants to go, we're filling 18 yep. spots. So that's going to be sick. Um, but, yeah, other than that, I'll just there be posting on there. Yeah, awesome. We'll check him out, and we'll uh, catch you guys in the next one.